Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am excited to show you this game from the 2021 League Championship Tournament. It's a double elimination tournament. I am in the loser's bracket, so I need to win all the rest of my games to make it back uh, to the finals. I am higher seeded than my opponent, and since it's a single game match, we bid for sides and we're bidding action tokens. I'm a little bit in the mood to play free people, so I only bid one action token to play shadow, and my opponent accepts. So I think that that is a slightly good deal for shadow. Maybe I should have offered nothing to play shadow if my opponent, my opponent accepted pretty readily. So I think they had, they also preferred to play free people, but I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with this outcome. You can, so I'm playing shadow and um, <clears throat> you can see my opening hand shadows gather. Obviously that gives me some good mobility. I'm thinking you know, maybe I can go something like Morin on to South Rune and and put the dwarves to war early, or go up north and uh, merge up with this army in Dol Golder, similar to what happened to me uh, in the last game. So, you know, I think this is a great first roll for both of us. I'm happy to have two eyes in there, given that my opponent has three movement. So, my opponent starts off by moving and is safe, which is fair. And then I muster Isengard and then my opponent uh, passes. And so here's a moment where, um, you know, I think I have some flexibility here. I'm not exactly sure why I play my character, my character movement here. I think I was planning on using my two musters for, to, to get Saruman and then to get um, Sauron to war. Um, but given that my opponent is almost certainly going to move again, I, I wonder if it makes sense to draw a character card here and, and leave my options open to using this character action as a card. So maybe that's a slight inaccuracy here. I didn't want to get Saruman right away because then my opponent could move again, lose Gandalf, and get Gandalf turn one. Obviously, I don't want to allow that. And so, yeah, I don't know. I have to play some die. Maybe it makes sense to draw a card with this Palantir here, and that could be a good use of that action, see what my opponent does. All right, so they move a second time, and then I hit them, and then I get an eye. So obviously, that's that's great for me. I'm really happy with this. And then they reveal into Holland. And so... You know, it's not great to be revealed in Holland because you can potentially get two extra tiles against you in Moria, one going in, one going out. Um, and so, with, and then they lose Gandalf, which, you know, I think I think that makes sense. That's fine. It's nice to be able to use Strider's ability to hide here. And you hope that you'll roll a Will of the West as free people next round and be able to get Gandalf. So... I go ahead and draw a character card here. I'm very happy to play Give It To Us. I certainly want to play it at some point. But I draw a character card because I know there are quite a few cards in the character deck that are that will give me a chance to reveal the Fellowship into Moria. So that's why I draw a character card here. Any of the tile drawing cards, any of the ones that move Nazgul and automatically reveal the Fellowship or get to roll extra for the hunt... So there are a lot of character cards that can help me here, and that's why I just draw a character card. So, and by the way, if I had then, if I had drawn a card that rewarded me for, for the fellowship being revealed, it would have been a shame that I had not drawn that earlier and spent my character card. So that was my character die. So I think that was a little bit of an ina inaccuracy by me earlier in the turn. So... I don't want to muster Saruman right now. I'm obviously going to save that for the last action. And because I want to reveal them in Moria, I move an army onto them in Holland. And then I get this army in Mordor moving towards Morinon, which can continue north towards Dew. That's my plan. My opponent rightfully does not use their action token right here. Yes, it would let them go last, but then in that case, I just wouldn't muster Saruman. I wouldn't let them get Gandalf turn one. So is it worth one action token right here to delay Saruman by a round? I think not really. So I, th I think that's a, I think that's probably a fair choice. Save the action token. 
they use an army muster. They use the Will of the West as an army muster, which I think makes a lot of sense. One idea for that, maybe early in the turn, given that they had Celeborn's Galadrium, maybe it makes sense to have used that as a Palantir to draw two strategy cards when you still had Gandalf as guide. But given that Gandalf isn't guide now, I think it makes total sense to use that as an army muster. I think that's a perfectly good play. And even with Gandalf, maybe you want to save the Will of the West for exactly the reason they did. Okay, I get Saruman now that that Will of the West is gone, and I just hope they're not going to roll Will of the West, and we'll see what happens round two. So, let's see. I managed to draw into Orc Patrol, and I feel very pleased for my decision for drawing a character card last turn, even though I had a playable character card. Now I got to Orc Patrol, which is exactly what I wanted, to be able to reveal them. As soon as they, as soon as they move once, I can then play Orc Patrol and potentially reveal them into Moria. So that would be really nice. And if I get lucky on my hunt and reveal them just on their movement into Moria and then they hide, I can play it again and get another tile in Moria. So this is definitely a scary situation for, for the Fellowship. And I allocate two eyes because, I don't know, may, maybe that's a mistake. I, I did it because I want to try and catch them into Moria and I certainly don't want them to get two movement to get past Moria immediately without getting caught. So... I don't know, maybe that's a little bit of overkill. What happens is I roll two more eyes and no characters or palantirs. And so this beautiful character card that I just drew, I can't actually play. And so I think it's relatively unlikely that I don't roll any any um, palantirs or character dice, but maybe that's a slight argument to only allocating one eye because this happened and now I'm not going to be able to play it. So that's a shame. My opponent gets their Will of the West, which is obviously great for them. Gandalf's going to show up right away turn two, which is really good. And then they have one character movement, which is all they really want against four eyes and two musters. So I think this is a great this is a great role for them. Maybe it would be nice to get one more movement while I don't have any character uh, dice or palantirs. But I think this is a pretty good role overall for them. All right, they get Gandalf right away. That's fine. I muster Sauron towards war. And then they move once and I hit them, but I don't do any damage. So they take a random companion and lose Legolas. So, you know, I think that's fair, reasonable. And they take one corruption. And then I start moving armies and I hadn't really made up my mind. I'm very happy to see Swarm of Bats because that means I can use it in Old Forest Road, even if they've drawn scouts and eliminate this unit in Old Forest Road without letting them retreat. And... I guess I move this 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 army from Morin onto Daggerlad, thinking that I'm going to be able to maybe join up with Shadows Gather. So my plan right now is just to take out Do, and then who knows where I'm going to get my last five points. That's that's sort of my plan right now. And I'm thinking that if I get there fast enough, these these just these Mordor armies are going to be enough, or these um, Sauron armies should be enough to be able to take out all of Do if I'm fast. Okay, so they play Celeborn's Galadrium, and that obviously makes sense. And then I attack into Old Forest Road. At this point, I'm thinking the North is going to be the nation that I'm going to put to war first so that I can hopefully get the Witch King next round. And I play Swarm of Bats just in case they have scouts, and they don't play any card, and I manage to eliminate that unit, but they hit me back for one. Okay, all of this is fine. And then they muster Gondor one, Gondor one towards war. I don't know. I, you know, that's fine. I, I think um, elves are always an interesting target too, but maybe it looks like elves are coming under to be besieged soon anyway, so maybe it's not worth it. Gondor seems reasonable. I don't think they have any other cards they can play, so yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I go ahead and move armies again. I thought about using that as a muster, but um, I get Carrick and putting the north one away from war and that way if at some point they do a muster action to get the north all the way to war i can then attack in and maybe this unit from dale is going to escape somewhere but at least there won't be any more mustering points for the north in this region of the board and now i get my army to um no man land which is going to allow it to move three to either connect up in old forest road or in dale with shadows gather I'm also very happy to see Ringwraiths are abroad. That's going to give me good flexibility if I need to. If I get a bunch of Palantirs, I'll be able to get extra movement. All right, so we move on. Obviously, it's not great for, for me that, 
their five dice starting on turn three for for free people but you know that i think that's the the, the gamble paid off you know about 50 percent chance of getting gandalf turn two if you if you lose him turn one so all right my opponent um i i i allocate one eye roll an extra one this time and my opponent gets a you know, maybe not a great role, but two movement. I mean, you have Strider as guide, so I, I don't know that this is a horrible role for them. Um, Athelos is obviously a great thing. Uh, Faramir's Rangers is a very playable card. So I, I think they're in oh, Horn of Gondor also. So they have plenty of playable cards here. Um, it's not such a bad time to get a bunch of Palantirs. They start with Horn of Gondor. And this is a mistake because I can have... Orc Patrol, Isildur's Bane, Falthing from the Deep, Nazgul Search, any of the ones that reveal them or have the chance to reveal them into Moria. So it's much better to get your first movement and then you'll be past Moria. And then maybe you're going to still take the tile, but at least you're not going to take two tiles in and out of Moria. Okay, so I'm very pleased that I have a chance to now play Orc Patrol. I do so and I manage to reveal them. Obviously, that is good luck. And they get rev- they soak up the one point of damage from Horn of Gondor and then get revealed into Moria where I draw a two. And they just take the two points of damage, which is certainly correct, given that they have Athelas. And honestly, I might have been tempted even, given that I had Athelas in hand and we don't know what that next tile was going to be, I might have been tempted to even take that one corruption from the, from the first tile and save Horn of Gondor for later. Um, as it turned out, it worked out perfectly. They have three corruption. They can play Athlos. It's going to be great. So the first thing that they do is hide using Strider's ability. And <clears throat> then I muster here. And, you know, I have, um, I have Ring Wraiths are abroad. So I know that I'm going to be able to position these Nazgul where I want. And that's why I muster them. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I should be mustering up or thank here. Um, it's, you know, probably a mistake, honestly. Um, it's nice to get Nazgul, but there are other cards that get Nazgul for me. Shadows on Misty Mountains, um, the Black Captain Commands can get me, can get me Nazgul. And I'm, I'm sort of, I'm following the Fellowship right now with this army and I don't think they're moving that fast. So this army in Moria is probably going to be able to keep up with the fellowship. So I I think it probably would have been better to do some mustering in Orthanc because this is a situation where, yes, I want to get the North to war so that I can get the Witch King this turn. But then, like, I could easily get, um, I could get to Rivendell um, if I muster up a few units here in North and South Dunland. And then, you know, Moria, I could, I could get some units in. So I think the voice, the voice of Isengard, the voice of Saruman probably was, was better for these two musters instead of, instead of getting Nazgul. So my opponent plays Athelos using a character die. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess that gives him options or them options to play Faramir's Rangers. So yeah, that's, that makes sense. Um, they're only going to move once anyway, and it's Strider, so you can hide. And then they heal three corruption with Othalos. You know, expected is two. The fact that they got three, obviously, I don't love that, but it's not so unfair. Um, and it's just so satisfying. I mean, come on, Athelos, uh, Strider's guide, healing three. It's the biggest heal you can possibly get in the whole game. Um, that's very satisfying. So uh, cool play of that card. Happy to see that. And, you know, the hunt had been going pretty well for me. And I felt sort of lucky that I managed to get that tile um, into more in the first place. So, okay, luck balances out. It's a good heal. And um, I muster more Nazgul. So these two, these two musters, these two early game musters, maybe, maybe a mistake. Um, if I had mustered up units instead of Nazgul, then when I have army movements, I could have marched on somewhere. Um, Lorien looks pretty buff, but, you know, Rivendell could have been tasty. Okay, my opponent now moves. I managed to catch them, but I don't reveal them this time. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then I attack Dale here because uh, obviously I want to get the Witch King. I play Desperate Battle. Obviously, it's not the most efficient use of that card, but I don't really want that guy retreating, and I'm going to have to discard anyway. 
because I'm going to draw two more cards and I really don't, I'm happy with all of these. It, so um, I, I'm sort of focusing on a corruption game. So I'm happy to play breaking at some point when the fellowship gets revealed and get an extra tile out of the pool. So, okay. So I play, I, I play that. And then I leave only one unit in Old Forest Road, planning to move my army into um, from from No Man Land into Old Forest Road. The reason why I do that instead of leaving more people in Old Forest Road is that um, I don't know that that really matters. I think I think what what I, my plan is is eventually to go Woodland Realm and then. And then Erebor, because I maybe I'm thinking I'm still taking two Elven Strongholds. I think given that I'm sort of saying to myself, I'm only going to take one Elven Stronghold, um, I think this was probably a little bit of a mistake. I think it would have been better to leave the Elves alone, move in only one unit to Dale, and then merge my Uber army into Dale, and then attack into Erebor. And that way I put the dwarves to war, but the elves still stay away from war. The benefit of that is not only I can potentially get um, elves to war later, but also um, I don't activate Cirdan's ships. So if at some point I draw into Corsairs of Umbar, I would rather the elves are not at war. and I would rather the dwarves be at war. So, and also if I'm worried a little bit about military victories, you know, like I did empty out Dol Golder. I don't think my opponent's going to go that route, but you know, it can happen. So keeping the elves away from war is probably better if you have the chance to besiege Erebor. Um, I think normally what happens is this little army from Old Forest Road doesn't like, doesn't, isn't enough to take Erebor. But if I bothered to move this whole army from Baradur all the way to No Man Land, and I'm going to play a card to teleport them three spaces, better, the better advantage is to go, is to go after Erebor. And maybe even this regular isn't going to make it in if I, if I time it right. So this was probably a mistake. Um, It's yeah, slightly more efficient, but okay. Enough, enough on that. Um, my opponent passes, I go ahead and move armies in preparation for my opponent declaring in Dimraldale at the start of next turn. Um, and I don't bother moving this army in No Man Land again because I, I really feel committed to playing Shadows Gather at this point, so I don't even bother with that. My opponent draws a strategy card, which is interesting. Um, you know, I feel like why not draw a character card, but okay. Or play Faramir's Rangers. Uh, you're going to end up discarding here. I don't know what they're searching for. Um, oh, prob probably something to defend Woodland Realm could be good. Or Dane Ironfoot's Guard. Or Cairdon's Ships if I'm putting the Elves to War. So, okay, that's reasonable. Or any of the cards to defend Helm's, you know, Rohan. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good to have strategy cards. So that's fair enough. I get the Witch King. Obviously, that's a good play for me. All right, next round, I draw um, Shadows on the Misty Mountains, and I'm sad for because I bothered to muster all my Nazgul, so this is a less efficient thing. Um, and Black Captain Commands is great, but again, not useful because, uh, not as useful because I, I don't need to recruit any more Nazgul. So, all right. Uh, my opponent draws into the Red Arrow. I guess they discard Path of the Woeses. That makes sense. And... Um, my opponent asks if it's okay for them to declare. Obviously, the, the intent is to declare out of Moria, so certainly we allow that. Um, and then I allocate two eyes because I have two rerolls, and that seems nice. And I feel like the the hunting is going pretty well, so I want to keep up the pressure. Maybe I should have backed off given that three points of healing. Um, so I don't know. This this is a little bit potentially a little bit of a mistake. All right, I don't roll any more eyes, and my opponent gets a bunch of movement. So I don't feel too bad for allocating the two eyes. Whether or not it was the right choice, I don't know, but uh, certainly this result is a very nice result. I'm happy to have it. All right, my opponent starts off moving, and the extra reroll is particularly satisfying. The extra reroll re -roll catches, catches them, and then we get two and reveal. Random companion gets Boromir. 
it's interesting. I might just, I mean, on one hand, it's good to get rid of companions. On the other hand, I, I would be a little wary to lose Strider here. Um, but okay. So I play Breaking of the Fellowship here and get a zero. You know, better than getting an eye. Worse than a tile that costs some corruption, but okay. I don't I don't mind it too much. Uh, my opponent hides and then I move armies. I'm sort of thinking about what, you know, where I should move my other armies. I I didn't quite I didn't muster the South Rounds and Easterlings to war yet, so they can't really do much. And I didn't get um I didn't get a bunch of units in North and South Dunland. So like these half army movements were just a little uh, not not super efficient. Um you know, that moving units from near Harad to Umbar is okay um, if I have Corsairs, but I don't have Corsairs yet. The South Rounds and Easterlings are not at war, and um, I'm. it seems like I'm planning on putting the Elves uh, to war myself. So, all right, my opponent moves again, and this time I miss them, even on fives with four dice, but, you know, uh, sometimes you're going to miss, so that's fine. And I play Shadows Gather finally, which was obviously my plan. And um, then I go ahead and muster a little bit in Isengard, I guess. I mean, I don't know exactly what I'm planning here. I I, I didn't quite make up my mind because then my next muster, I um, get the South Rounds and Easterlings a little bit towards war. So there's a little... A little inconsistent there. I think I, I couldn't quite make up my mind. And I didn't play Shadows on Misty Mountains. Um, you know, I that could have been a real possibility. Instead of mustering two units in Orthanc and the South Rounds and Easterlings towards war, I could have played Shadows on Misty Mountains and then done a um, done one action to muster with the voice in Isengard. And then I would have had one, I would have had three units there, four units total, plus two more Moria, six units. It's not quite enough to take Rivendell. Um, so yeah, I left myself kind of stuck in just taking Woodland Realm and taking Erebor, but we'll see if it's enough. All right, so my opponent moves again, get another reveal and two damage. This time my opponent just takes the two damage and I attack Woodland Realm. I don't have anything particular to um, punish the Fellowship for being revealed there. All right, they hide, and then I play Black Captain Commands here to both attack Woodland Realm and move the Nazgul so that I can get a reroll at the start of next round. I'm hoping for drawing into Corsairs. And then I play Shadows on Misty Mountains as a combat effect, which normally, I mean, normally I would almost always use that as a um, card because it's so powerful. Two and a half, you know, dice worth of mustering. But I feel like Lorien is well defended. I'm putting the elves to war in Woodland Realm. And, and so Rivendell isn't that appealing a target. I think in the end, maybe this whole attack situation was misguided. Um, and I should have just, you know, been attacking Erebor and then come back to the elves later. So... A little bit of a shame there. Um, I get one hit. My opponent gets one. And then there are two regulars there. And I'm thinking whether or not to do Onslaught. And I don't know what the right choice is. I don't think it makes a huge difference one way or another. Um, if I just press to next round, um, you know, I'm taking an automatic hit. And then am I going to get two sixes? Maybe, maybe not. So I decide to lose three, and then I get one hit. And so three for one hit is not that great a deal. Um, and then I press and get the final and get the final hit, but then they get a hit back at me. So now I'm thinking, you know, this army is not so buff to be able to take out Erebor. It's a little bit, it's a little bit of a shame, but I'm probably going to need reinforcements now. So. Maybe at this point it would have been better just to give up on Erebor and go attack somewhere else. But because I put the elves to war, now these elven, other elven strongholds are not so appealing. So I think this was just a little bit of a misplay in terms of timing and when I went after what. 
All right, my opponent draws into Kirden ships. That's obviously nice for them. And they get rid of Red Arrow. Um, I don't know. I mean, I really like scouts as an option. Um, and you've already seen one, one um, swarm of bats. So the odds of that being able to work out of Fords of Eisen is pretty nice. And also I just like it as a card effect because it lets you get an elite and Edoras, Rohan closer to war. Yeah, I don't know that I would have discarded that. Okay, so um, I allocate one eye, roll three more, and then my opponent gets a very nice roll. And then they end up starting off moving and I miss them here. So I'm not excited for them to declare into Minas Tirith, but at the same time, I don't mind too much if they're going to take a slow route. So um, we'll see. I get the Southrons and Easterlings to war because I know I'm going to need to reinforce this attack on Erebor. That's my plan. And then my opponent plays Cirdan's ships right here, I think because they're a little confused about exactly when you have to play that if this army is under siege. But it's not so crazy. Um, I think a slight, slightly out of order, but okay. So... You know, now I'm feeling like, wow, definitely dumb to get the elves to war. I didn't draw Corsairs, but if I had, I, you know, why let my opponent defend like this? So, again, getting elves, just a single elven stronghold to war, giving them three free musters out of that, probably not worth it. And I'm going to have to worry a little bit about Dol Golder and Moria. They're completely empty, so Lorien could go after it if I get a really weird roll. Um all right, so I start moving my armies around. My opponent does an army muster, and then they then they move these units to Dimrald Dale just to mess with me, just to make me waste to die. I don't think that's I don't think that's bad. Um, you know, maybe I'd be a little worried about getting these units um, from West of Net into Helm's Deep, but this isn't bad. And am I really going to come attack Lorien? Like I emptied out Moria and Dol Guldur, um, so I think Lorien is relatively safe. And the elves are at war now, so it's fine. All right, so I muster in Moria and Dol Guldur, and then um, they draw again a strategy card, and I move armies. I need to get my armies from East Rune into Iron Hills and then besiege Erebor so that I can take out Erebor. My opponent moves a second time. So they move twice, but not three times. I guess that's fair. What's nice about this situation is that if they are one away at the start of next round, they can wait until the last action because they have their action token to then make their final movement into into Moria, into Mordor. And the benefit of that is they avoid cruel weather, they avoid Nazgul search, Nazgul strike, any of the cards that require the fellowship to be at one movement. The risk is foul thing from the deep or Isildur's bane because I've already played Orc Patrol. So, but I think the hunt pool right now. Um, there were only two out of eight, so only a 25% chance of stalling them, um, you know, if I even have those cards. So I think it's, you know, that's it makes sense they would move twice this round, so they're going to be one away next round. I do hit them. I get three hits, which is obviously good, um, but I don't reveal them, so they take two and they go up to five. Um, I think it makes sense to continue to hold on to a strider here and go up to five. All right. Oh, they decide, in fact, to take a random. I forgot. And they lose Strider there. Um, you know, not the best, uh, but you're still hidden. So it, it's it's not horrible. And they do have theirs another way in hand at this point. And so that's pretty nice to get down to get down to Gollum. Um, and that was the third random. So, OK. I go ahead and play the ring as mine now because I want to get it out of my hand. I have enough cards and I'm not in a super rush to attack Erebor. I want to make sure I have the right cards in um, the right red tiles in when they start their climb up Mordor. And um, I mean, maybe I should attack, but I'm worried that I'm not going to roll enough Palantirs or character dice. So um, that's what I do. All right, next round, I draw into Cruel Weather. Obviously, that's not the best timing. Um, they get Dane Ironfoot's Guard. Perfect timing for Dane Ironfoot's Guard. 
um, discard Grimbjorn and Fearfire Foes. Interesting that they kept House of Stewards. Probably wouldn't have bothered to keep House of Stewards here. Um, because Fearfire Foes is a good defensive combat effect. I allocate one eye, roll two more, and then they get a bunch more movement. And what's interesting here is I did wait. Actually, the the um, log doesn't show the time. But after I said one eye and I allocated an eye, I waited probably like 10 seconds. And I waited so long that my opponent said, okay. And at that point, I rolled. Um and so I think it would have been much better for them to declare into South Athelian or North Athelian um, so that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't get to um, play the cards that work when they're at, um, you know, one or more on the, on the fellowship track. So I think, I think that was probably a mistake. All right. They start by playing Dane Ironfoot's Guard. Again, maybe not realizing they could wait until the army is besieged. And at this point, I could play Cruel Weather. Um, but they have enough movement anyway. So I'm thinking I would rather I would rather wait until they make their movement potentially not hit them, potentially not reveal them, um, and then play it again so uh and then and then play it at the end at the end of the round um but maybe i should have played it right here just just when i had the chance it's going to make them do extra movement and um potentially cost extra corruption so maybe i should have it felt a little weird to move them off of a place where i have a reroll to a place where i don't have a reroll um okay so um I play give it to us here. I want to make sure that's in the pool. And then they go ahead and move. I hit them and I reveal them. So, you know, now I'm not going to be able to play Cruel Weather. I, I don't feel horrible about that, but, you know, would have been better to be able to play it. Um, I did get the hit on the reroll. So, okay. Um, I, I hit them with an eye, which is great because now five out of six tiles do additional damage but on the redraw i get another eye so obviously it's not great but um you know i the moria tile wasn't an eye the breaking of the fellowship wasn't an eye the orc patrol wasn't an eye okay this one's an eye that that's pretty pretty even though theoretically you know it was unlikely in this moment only one out of six overall something that i should do uh something that i do should be an eye so i i'm like okay luck luck sort of balances out over the long run okay um i muster up in ising in in isengard and orthanc and my plan now to get 10 victory points is just um you know a little it's a little tough i'm gonna i guess hopefully get erebor get helms deep and then one either edoras or pelarger and Minas Tirith. That's what I'm thinking right now. So it's not great. Um, my military is going pretty slow. It's turn six, and um, I'm just not making enough uh, progress against the Fellowship. Um, so this is a little tricky. Um, my The opponent uh, hid, and so if I can get Isildur's Bane or... Um, foul thing from the deep, I can potentially reveal them again and get a bonus tile out of uh, minus Morgul. So I, I think it was a little bit of a mistake here to to hide uh, this early in the round. So I go ahead and besiege Erebor. I um, move armies. I get into Eastamnet just with the idea that maybe I'll sneak into Edoras or something like that. I don't know. Um, and again, this was a, like this is an example of like just kind of a meaningless uh, attack. My opponent, <clears throat> my opponent draws a card here. I guess they want to go last this round, um, or they just don't have a character card that they're particularly excited about, so they go ahead and do it. Um, I play Ringwraiths are abroad because. I want to make another attack so that I can cycle Cruel Weather 
and hopefully draw into something that will um, matter, like um, either the tile drawing cards, um, anything that inflicts corruption, or um, any of the red tiles. There are a bunch of things that I could draw into here that would be useful. So that's why I use my ring wraiths are abroad, and I want to make progress against um, um, Erebor. Anyway, all right. So I move Nazgul around a bit, and and then I attack. Cruel as death, and um, I get one hit, and my opponent gets one hit, and because I have Oleg like, High in hand, um, I just lose a regular, and I'm fine. This is, is fine. Obviously, it would have been nice to inflict more damage, but I didn't take too much damage back, so great. Um, I draw Balrog. Useless. Sad, but that's how it goes sometimes. Okay, my opponent draws a free character card again. Um... I think it takes a lot of discipline to, you know, keep drawing. I guess they they weren't they still they they still had uh, they had one card slot open, so I guess that makes sense. Um, Ulukai, I go ahead and play it. Obviously, would have preferred to have some character card to play. Maybe I should have drawn a character card there. That was the other thing I was considering. Um, but I wanted to put some pressure on the military side of things so that I could, so that the fellowship would have to move a bit. And because I have a lot of eyes, I just have a lot of eyes that are going to be in the pool, like half of the tiles or something are going to be eyes. Um, so encouraging the fellowship to move quickly because of the military pressure has some value to me. All right. My opponent um, does one movement of a, a regular back into Helm's Deep. I guess that makes sense. They didn't really have anything they wanted to play. Um, you know, I guess that makes sense. You could play there as another way, I guess, to heal one now while you have the chance. But I guess that's not horrible. Okay, so next round, they declare into um, Mordor. And, um, I, I, um, this was a moment where I pressed control R, but I was trying to press control E. So this is a good reminder to type out the number of eyes and then allocate them. Um, I had decided before I rolled, it's hard to see, but I, I was thinking for a while and then I rolled, um, I had to, I had decided to, to allocate two eyes because the hunt pool, um, is so full of eyes that I just wanted to up the value. And you know you have some chance of not rolling um, any more eyes. So I wanted to have at least two in there and three would probably be okay with me. Um, but I didn't, I didn't allocate any eyes, I just rolled. And then my opponent, my opponent rolls um, sort of without thinking uh, or not, not without thinking, but just, you know, that's the natural response after you see shadow roll, then you roll. Um, but we both agreed like, okay, I really did mean to allocate two eyes. So the j standard rule when you roll too many dice, either combat dice or anything, is you ignore the rightmost. So um, the rightmost two action dice were uh, a C and an M. And so those are the two dice that I move um, into the, the box, the hunt box. So my opponent just trusts me and says, yeah, I believe you, you, you meant to allocate two. So that, that was fine. Um, you know, in a more serious tournament game, uh, if we had any questions, you should always call a judge, but we were playing in a pretty friendly manner. My opponent trusted me. I wasn't trying to cheat. So th this was fine. Um, we were both fine with this. So I think that's fine. Um, my opponent starts off by moving right away. Um, you know, if you don't have any, cards that help you. Um, I think that makes sense. And my opponent properly uses a will of the West because they don't want to lose that today without Dawn. So I think that is, makes total sense. And then they start off with a zero. So just for future reference, I'm going to make a quick note about what they had. There was a, there was a zero, um, zero reveal, a one reveal, a one, two threes, and the one stop the eye stop and then four eyes so that's that that's what was in the pool when they started up the mortar track and so far they've taken zero corruption and gotten revealed revealed once um 
Okay, we'll, we'll make note of that for uh, analysis at the end. All right, so that's a good start for them. Obviously, don't want to get hit by a bunch of eyes. I get the mouth, and they hide. And um, why didn't I play Lure of the Ring there? I don't know. I think I think that was just a mistake. Um, I think I wanted to save it for corruption against Gollum, but I'm gonna draw more cards later, so I don't I don't know about that. Um, I draw a character card here instead. I think it probably would have been better just to play Lord of the Ring when I had the chance. Um, Okay, my opponent passes. I drew Nazgul Strike, obviously pretty useless. My plan is to attack into Erebor to cycle these character cards into something that is more playable. Um, yeah, maybe my thinking was, I if I if I play Lure of the Ring, I won't have any other um, character cards that I can cycle in Erebor. And I want to be cycling character cards in Erebor. Maybe that was wrong thinking. Maybe what I really wanted to was play Lord of the Ring when you can inflict damage, and then you know defeat Erebor with your great with your great combat cards like Desperate Battle and Deadly Strife. So I ended up playing. Uh, I ended up drawing a card, not useful, and then cycling it in combat. And Black Breath is obviously you know a very weak combat effect. Um, you know, maybe kill one leader. Okay, but nothing nothing like Desperate Battle or, or Deadly Strife. Um, so I'm sort of going soft on the dwarves with my combat cards. And um, we'll see what happens. So I get one hit. Um, obviously, with all these fives, it would have been very pleasant to have Desperate Battle or Deadly Strife. Um, and then my opponent gets three plus one. So, you know, that is now looking like a very different siege. I only have, um, you know, nine hit points against a really powerful Dwarven army still in there. And then when I draw my character card, I get words of power. So, you know, I drew Balrog, Lure of the Ring, Black Breath, or, or Nazgul Strike, and Lidless Eye. So four, uh, three of the four most recent character cards I've drawn have been useless, um, and not, I can't even cycle Balrog. So I don't know. Um, this really, this really, this battle in Erebor now, I'm like, okay, there's no way that I can successfully get to 10 victory points before the fellowship is going to make it. I need to just corrupt the fellowship as much as possible. Um, my opponent, uh, moves some armies around. And then I attack into Erebor again, just cycling more cards. I'm going to cycle Lidless Eye um, to try and draw into more useful character cards, like a Red Tie would be great. Heroic Death, um, I get one hit, which is, you know, not so different than what you'd expect, you know, somewhere between one or two hits. Um, I'm not playing Desperate Battle. I'm not playing Deadly Strife, so I'm just not inflicting that much damage. And then my opponent gets four hits against me. So, you know, the Battle of Erebor is certainly lost. Um, I'm going to need major reinforcements. Um, and I drew into Palantir Vorthank, which is like, okay, but not really going to directly inflict corruption. Um, so maybe I overestimated the number of useful cards in the character deck. It's possible. Um there are quite a few, though. Any of the red tiles, that's two. Any of the tile drawing cards. Um, Candles of Corpses would be good. At least at least five cards. But I guess that's not, that's not that many. Okay. Um, I go ahead and muster up again in North Rune because I think, well, it's still the best chance. Erebor is still better. I don't know what else I can take. Elves can just be mustered and defended very easily. I can take out Minas Tirith, but I can't do much more than that with this army. So I still need to take Erebor. So I just have to muster up again. My opponent moves a second time this round. Obviously, that's risky against an eye, but I think it I think it probably makes sense. I don't know. The Fellowship is... I mean, the Shadow Military is going pretty slowly. So I don't know that I would have risked that. Um, okay. They get it. They, they draw an eye. Um, obviously, not great. But, um, 
it was one, two, there, that was literally half the pool. Half the pool was eyes. Um, so yeah. Um, they take four. So I'm just to keep track. They've now taken four corruption and they've been revealed twice. And um, there we go. So they have Gollum. I play Palantir as the last action. So it's going to make it a little tough. They're going to have to potentially ration their rings. Um, hopefully Palantir can stick around. I allocate one eye because I have to, and that's my only choice. I roll one more, and they get a nice roll. They could certainly consider getting rid of the Palantir here, but I only have one Palantir die showing, um, and I drew Worm Tongue. So again, maybe I've just overestimated the number of useful character cards uh, in the deck. Um, my opponent plays There's Another Way, Healing One and Hiding. Obviously, that's good. And then I could play The Shadow is Moving. That's like my only playable card. I guess Monsters Roused. But I don't have any playable character card here, um, even though I really want to play this. Um I end up hoping to cycle into my plan now is muster back up and then use some army movement, get, take Erebor, and then hopefully cycle into some, some more character cards to get something playable. Um, my opponent gets file of Gladriel, obviously very nice for them. And um, then I just start moving my armies and I don't really have a great place to move them. Um, I don't even see, I move from Gorgoroth to Minus Morgul. Okay. Um, seems okay. Um, they muster Rohan a little bit. I continue to move my armies. I get this now army into Dale. I get these two regulars into Westamnet so that if Rohan ever gets to war, I can um, immediately take Edoras and Fold with these two regulars, which is pleasant. And... Um, then I get some more armies into, I, I get my armies into Erebor, and now I have these units in North Athelion. And then I go ahead and attack into Erebor, knowing that um, maybe I can cycle into some character cards. It's a little strange that my opponent hasn't moved yet. They're letting me cycle my character cards. Um, I managed to get two hits this time my opponent doesn't get any back and then um i press i get grand which is again not able to inflict corruption and is not a playable character card to draw um with palantir and then i go ahead and play desperate battle at this point sudden strike does something but not enough and then the battle is done so you know i take out airbore eventually but that cost me a long time and a lot of dice um, so military victory is just, is just way too slow. I'm just hoping that somehow the fellowship is going to get corrupted. Um, they move again here, which is right, I guess, cause now I just managed to draw a character card and I get a three. So now they've taken, they've taken seven corruption, but they've only been revealed twice and they don't use Gollum, which is definitely correct. I was hoping to play Lord of the Ring here. Why I didn't play it earlier when I had the chance, I don't know. But now at this point, I don't really have any particularly playable card at all. Um, so it was super a shame to have Palantir Vorthank and not even have a playable card. So maybe I should have used Shadow is Moving earlier. Um, I attack as Gilead because I'm thinking, well, at least I will um, get to play shadow is moving on my last action if i do it this way it's not it's not clear to me that that's even worth much um yeah i mean I'm, I'm certainly it's certainly a tough tough situation for shadow here uh gondor is at war and then I, now i play shadow is moving again not particularly efficient but i do take edoras and fold um pile up a huge army in as and then one extra movement to Gap of Rohan. Okay, who cares? Um, again, I just didn't I didn't manage those little extra movements as efficiently as I could have. All right, Palantir, obviously it was a good choice for my opponent to let that stay. My opponent just drew into Mithril Coat and Sting. You know, they've drawn through half the character deck. They spent a lot of time drawing character cards. 
Um, so be it. I, I I got Morgul Wound okay now, but still I have Lord of the Ring and Morgul Wound now. I can't effectively play them both. Um, my opponent, I allocate one eye, roll one extra, and then my opponent starts off um, by moving. You know, I think that makes sense. Obviously, it would be nice to have Mithril Coat and Sting first, but I understand also the desire to get the Will of the West out of there in case I have um, Day Without Dawn, uh, and I get a one. So, you know, that's obviously great. And then... Um, I besiege Minas Tirith. What else can I do? I'm just trying to cycle uh, cycle cards. So, you know, I'll play Denethor's Folly next if there's a chance. Um, my opponent plays Ents here, gets some damage, and then they get um, Mithril Coat and Sting in play. I play Denethor's Folly to draw a character card. Um, I get Horn with Sorrow and Toil. Again, not useful. And um, then... My opponent moves and gets a one. So at that point, it's very, very unlikely, you know, to stop them. At that point, I would need both red tiles. Mithril Coat and Sting is obviously a very powerful effect. Um, you know, the three healing from Athelos was, you know, big, but I don't know. So how much corruption total? That was a total of nine corruption um, and two reveals. So I don't know. They got... They got um, Filed Galadriel in there relatively early, so let's let's count that. Let's look at briefly the statistics. Um, so let's view statistics. And if you look here, um, remember these are... Um, oh, that's interesting. So I'm not sure... Certainly, these are mine because I rolled more combat dice than the Fellowship. Often on a replay, these are reversed, so I'm not sure what's going on. But you can see these were pretty pretty balanced. My opponent obviously had very good movement, um, but the combat was the combat was fairly fairly balanced. I was just that the the battle in Erebor went particularly poorly, and that that slowed me down a lot. Um, so let's look at um, the hunt simulator and see what we can see from that. So one second. Okay, just one moment. Sorry for the delay. It's going to be about 10 seconds. If you want to jump ahead 10 seconds, we'll see if it works. All right, that was seven seconds. Okay, welcome back if you're here now. Okay, so uh, let's just look at... Um, okay, everybody can see this, hopefully. Let's maximize it. Okay, so... Uh, just to get a sense of how lucky things were um, on the climb up Mordor. It felt a little lucky to me, but I don't know that it was that lucky. So we're going to give two points of two times that damaging tiles have to be drawn to hit to get Gollum. In fact, it was only one, but I think on average it's probably going to be two in that situation given that, that they had four um, hit points for the Fellowship in there. Um, I'm not going to count Mithril Coat and Sting because that didn't show up till the very end. Um, and there was one zero reveal, one, one reveal, one regular. There was no, um, there were no twos. There were two threes and we'll give them the file of Galadriel from the beginning. Um, the, the simulation cannot handle, uh, them showing up in the middle and let's see, let's see what happens with this. So normally we would expect to, so it's, it's pretty close. Um, normally we would expect to inflict maybe around 11 corruption, actually inflicted nine corruption. So it's not that far off. And there are 3.2 reveals. Actually, there are only two reveals. Um, you know, so it went, you know, it went well for them, but there was, yeah, you know, this is easily within, 
nine nine corruption is only thirty five percent. So yeah, it was a pleasant it was a pleasant climb up Mordor, but not an unreasonably pleasant climb up Mordor. Um, I think my biggest mistakes that game were putting the elves to war early instead of the dwarves, and that left me with fewer options when the battles didn't go as well as they could have and i wasn't able to put two elven uh strongholds under siege at the same time even though my opponent didn't spend any time mustering the elves so i think if your opponent doesn't spend any time mustering the elves it's good to be able to get both of them under siege if you have other suggestions for what i could have done better that game i um i'd love to hear it i'm really open to it um Part of the reason why I do these videos is to be able to improve, and you can only do that if you think critically about what you do. Um, certainly there's luck in the game, but there are plenty of choices that you make. So uh, please share your feedback in the comments below. I'd really love to hear it. Um, and that means I'm eliminated from the uh, 2021 League Championship Tournament. Obviously, it's not great to go undefeated during the whole league and then get eliminated in your first two games, but sometimes that's how it goes. Um, I was really happy with my first game. This The second game, I think probably I made more mistakes, but um, that's how it goes. And um, congratulations to my opponent. Certainly well played, and um, I wish them luck in the rest of the tournament. We're going to have the annual... War of the Ring tournament coming up. Uh, registration will open in January and we'll hopefully kick it off in February or maybe even late January. So look for that. I'll obviously mention it on my channel when that goes live. And please join the Discord if you haven't. That's a good way of staying in touch and keeping updated on things that are going, going on. There are a bunch of people that play in the tournament. So even if you're not particularly experienced, lots and lots of people play in it. It's... Um, it's friendly. I mean, people obviously are trying to win, but it's a nice environment and it's Swiss. It's Swiss system, which means it's not elimination. Everybody gets to play um, all four rounds of the tournament. So it's a great experience. I hope you join. And if not, join the Discord, play some games for fun. The league registration is also opening up. So hope people will join that as well. Sorry for the PSA at the end, but um, hopefully that's relevant to some people. Uh, thanks so much. Have a good rest of the day.